This case happened in October 1957, just in the middle of the flat we had that year. And I have a close friend who's a newspaper man. He's called Martins. And he was one of, of the men involved with the, those photographs taken in 1952 in Rio. Do you remember? And after those photographs, this man became, became very interested in UFOs. And he has a network of 800 correspondents all over the country to report everything about UFOs to him. And his magazine pays his expenses when he goes to make personal investigation of the most interesting case. And almost every year he publishes articles about about the last of cases. Well, this man, this newspaper man, received a letter in November 57. And in this letter, there was a very strange history because the writer said that he had been kidnapped and had and had been taken to a UFO for several hours. And asked my friend if he was interested. He could came from his town to Rio to, to give his report to him. And my friend called me about the case and I told him, this man is my friend Martins. He asked my advice about this case because he had to pay the expenses. The expenses. And I said, well, could be a good case. Call him to come to me. Let's see what, what, what is his story. And he called the man. He was a 23 years old young man, intelligent, with no signs of psychological disturbance. Uh, he wasn't a crackpot, and he wasn't a mystic. And he told a very strange story. And we, we made a cross-examination of him, which lasted about seven hours. We two, myself and my friend. And this man, made the most de detailed description of the inside of a UFO that I have seen. And he said that he was in a tractor plowing a field and an object came down, egg-shaped, and the motor, the engine of the tractor was started the lights dimmed out and went out and the object came down slowly and landed in four in four legs, in three or four legs. I don't remember if it was a triple door for four legs. And the uh, a door was open and he saw five people in a kind of suit with helmet, helmets and they came down in his direction and he tried to run away and there was a fight he had to fight and at the end he was grasped and taken by force to the UFO and inside the UFO they took uh, his clothes and passed a kind of sponge with a liquid kind of oil substance all over his body and then they took samples of his blood 
from the chin, this side, this side, with a kind of tube. And he had two scars to show us. <laughs> and then he said that he had been taken to a small room with a number of small holes in the walls and then a gas came out from those holes and he was very disturbed, he had vomits and after a long time the door opened and he saw a, a woman and this woman was about four feet tall long hair, uh, blonde, almost white, high cheekbones, a very thin cheek, cheek chin, and blue eyes slanted on the sides, and she talked a very strange language, just like a dog, he said, just like a dog howling. And he said he had uh, sex contact with this woman. And then the others came. He never saw the others without the helmets. He only was, it was only possible to see the eyes through glasses because the helmet was transparent. And at the end, the woman disappeared in another room and the four other persons seated at the table talked with, it, with each other for a long time and at the, after a very long talk they called him by signs gave him his, his clothes and showed him the outside of the UFO and the last thing was a man who came with him to the outside. He pointed to the ground, he pointed to himself, and he pointed to a star in the south. And then the UFO was gone. I don't believe this, this story. This story was, we decided that it was too fantastic to be published and we kept the story secret like their first does <laughs> for seven years <laughs> but now another group of investigators they went to the to the town where this man lives and talked to him and got his report but a very poor one because after seven years he had forgotten most things, many things. And after this, I decided to publish to do the report of this case. I think it will be published by Apple. Uh, the but version in Gordon Creighton's article is not yours. It's, it's not mine, and it's very poor. It's because uh, the man in the second interrogation, he had forgotten many things. And the report we have has about 12 pages. It's very detailed, very, very detailed, very strange. How do you explain it, Doctor? Is this I can't delusion explain. or wishful thinking? Or I can't <laughs> Size. They say that the UFO was approximately, that they were so large they would have rooms the size of a small Zeppelin or a small uh, airship. The uh, 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 size of this room, perhaps. Did he describe how long it might have been, how high? No, he didn't give, he didn't give the, the measures. Mm -hmm. He said uh, this, is, this was a big room, that one was a small room, but no. But he but has... He had the, 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 the size, the distance between the, the, the legs on which the object had landed. Mm -hmm. well, what about the woman? Didn't she have a, a, a helmet on her, hair, on her head? 
as well? When he was attacked by the five men, the first one of was smaller, he said. And this one he pushed in, in the ground and he said that this this one was the woman. I see. Mm -hmm. You said the male crew members that their eyes could be seen, that they had flat eyes like the woman did? He said he, he couldn't be sure because the, the glass was very thick. He said he saw that they they could have uh, blue eyes but he couldn't be sure because the glass well, it was very true. Is there any medical reason why blood samples would be taken from a chin? I don't know. Perhaps they wanted capillary blood. I think that would be the only reason why mm -hmm. they would get capillary blood. Yeah. But Physiologically, was this woman the same as he said so? It was, it was very difficult to get details about his sex contact. It was. It sounds like he was, he was ashamed to tell us. One detail I'd like to know is uh, who started the whole business? Obviously she did. Who started? The, the sex contact. The woman. Was initiated by the woman. The woman. Obviously. Then, well, it sounds like the abduction was, took place. The woman came in and just put herself against him. It sounds like the abduction took place almost primarily for the sexual contact which would seem to be an, another uh, sort of, if this can be taken uh, uh, truth the real case, case. Which, is, which is doubtful. But it seems that this might be another sort of experiment as to determine what sort of offspring. It might be a sort of biological experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the case is true, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. And if this uh, story were true, wouldn't, wouldn't it mean that uh, these people have some way of reading the minds of uh, this for example. He said that in a, no moment he had the impression that they were, were, uh, they were able to read his mind. But why would they pick him? How would they know that he was uh, 23 years old, for example? I think they could have picked him because he seemed very good health and he had good muscles and he was handsome last in you know, our standards and uh, the report in his report there is mention to two sightings before the last one one over his house when he saw a light coming from the from the sky at night but there was nothing behind the light only a big searchlight and the second one when he was working in the fields with one of his brothers and they saw uh, an object that came down and started to, to go ar around them in the field and the day after this happened he was alone and in this day he said he was kidnapped. In other words it sounds like that the surveillance was being made of this particular person several times before the actual contact two times before, two times before. Your seven hour interrogation wasn't able to break him down in any way as to a possible no. explanation for the... Uh, no. But still I don't believe his story. I don't Are believe it because I think it's a story too fantastic to believe. But I wasn't able to break him. We repeated everything and he like uh, you said, he seemed to be honest yeah. <laughs> in his story. And he took also our advice because in the end we said to him, your, your report is not going to be published because it's too fantastic. But if you want, you can go tomorrow morning to the newspapers and give, give him the address of the several newspapers in Rio and you could tell them your history and we are absolutely sure that that will be published. And he said, why do you think that my report can't be published? And we said to him, 
because it's too fantastic and most people will believe that you are lying. And his answer was, well, if he, you think it's best, I'm going away from my town and not going to talk to anyone. And he did just that. He went back and his report was not printed. He talked with no people and only seven years after he talked again when those people who did the investigation for the saucer review went there. Didn't he travel to Rio though for, uh, hmm? for a, to consult a doctor? I think I read somewhere that he made a trip to Rio not to see newspapers but to visit no, you or no, some no. doctor. No, no. He, he sent me one, a letter once asking for drugs, asking for medical advice and hmm. for the names of certain drugs, but he went, I, I don't know if he went to Rio, I think he, hmm. he went. And in his last letter, he said to my friend Martins that now he was very happy because now he is a married man and if his report had been published he is in a very difficult position <laughs> now because his wife is very jealous. <laughs> he didn't uh, discount the story one... Eh? He, he didn't change the story one iota. At that point he didn't say it was all a, no. a story. It was still true. He was still sticking by the story. He was just grateful that nobody reported it. Yes. And when was this? Uh, it, this last this was in... October, October 15 or October 14, 1957. And there is also a medical observation concerning his case because after his experience, he, he was very sick for several days. He, he wasn't able to, to sleep. He lost his appetite. He was very weak, and there was a kind of eruption in his skin. And he, he had several symptoms that suggested radiation poisoning. 